welcome to, I guess it's uh, number five of ten of the Industry Career Agent Making Mountains of Mole Hills mission series. So we're getting into the fifth segment here. The mission is up on the screen and uh, it looks like a simple courier mission. So we could read through this, basically shows us where we need to go, make sure that we're, um, generally when you see a courier mission come up, you want to pay attention and make sure that, that the pickup location uh, is where you think it is. Generally speaking, you can fall into the rhythm of assuming that it's wherever you're at currently or wherever you're being given the, the mission, but that's not always the case, so it's best to check. So the pickup location is Moon 11 and Moon 11 Center. Yep, yeah, that's the same thing. The little check mark shows that we are actually where we're supposed to be. And, uh, and then we'll set a destination for where we're supposed to drop things off. It says that we're going to transport this crate of electronic parts, which is 40 cubic meters. Uh, I'm going to look, I've got 50 cubic meters worth of storage space on my venture, so I'm just going to keep flying this bad boy. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Now, just because it makes it easier to get back, I'm also going to add a waypoint. Um, to my destination. Now if you see over here like this, if you set a destination that sets your first sort of overall goal or your destination. Waypoints after that sort of give you destinations sort of further down the line, right? So you can daisy chain things together um, and set a route where you're stopping in multiple places to make sure that you you get there uh, and you get all the different stops that you need. So that's where we're at. Uh, I'm gonna accept and when you do a courier mission, you'll see that the item that you're supposed to transport shows up in your item hanger. It does not automatically get pop, uh, put into the hold of your ship. So I can't tell you how many times I've accepted a mission like this and then, you know, I've got all my little locations set up and I'm ready to go. And I undock from the station only to find three or four jumps in, hopefully it was that early that I re re realized, if not at the location itself, that I never actually grabbed the thing that I'm supposed to transport and then I had to go all the way back and do it again. So that's unfortunate. So um, we're going to make a little bit of money if we can get it done in under two hours and holy crap, I hope that's the case. Um, there really isn't a whole lot to this, but we'll just get going and, uh, and see how it goes. After the first jump or so, maybe I'll cut the video, pause it there, and then wait until I'm at the other side, and and then start the video up again, just so you don't have to watch me jump through multiple things. Now, when tra when traveling, um, there's a number of different ways to find your next jump. One, if you've got a destination set, your next sort of location where you're going, or the next gate or wherever, is going to be yellow in your overview. You can see it right there, and it's loose. And also, it's up here on the, the left side on the top. The bottom shows you kind of where your, your, your uh, final destination is, and the top shows you what your, your next step is. So you can either right click here and jump through Stargate, or you can select this and hit the jump button, or right click on the, the gate and then hit jump. So I'm gonna get going here and we'll be flying, and thankfully I've got the, you see the little blue check next to the cargo, so I've got the cargo. Um, this is 10 jumps in total, so we're five jumps out, which for me, I've, I, because I do these things, I took a stopwatch and I timed how long it took me, in general, um, to make each jump when I was going someplace, and generally it takes me, at least in a, in a, uh, transport ship, it takes me about a minute per jump, and that includes this transition time, it includes, you know, the, the actual warp time and everything else. Now you'll notice, once we've made that first jump and we had to go and like pick the location by ourselves, at the second jump and the rest of your trip, at least until you dock up, you will already have selected the next gate or the next destination that you need to go in your journey. So really, you don't even need to look over here to select it. You can just look at your selected item or your target window and hit jump and off you go. Active. Now, you'll note that, that my ship was invisible there. Um, when we get to the next gate, I'll actually show you exactly what I'm going to be talking about here, but when you pop through a gate, 
you always... The gate flashes. Like... So, there's a sound and you'll hear, you'll see a flash. And then when you pop up on the other side, you're cloaked. And you'll see a timer in the upper left corner here, the jump cloak timer. Which means, in total, you have about, or just under 60 seconds before you your cloak falls off. Now, if you jump through a dangerous gate, and notice that we are about uh, 12 kilometers off the gate we just came in. If you jump into a system and that gate has a bunch of enemies on the other side, this gives you about 60 seconds to figure out what you're gonna do. Um, gate camps are a very real thing, and what that is is uh, people set up in low sec or low security space or null sec which is basically no security space on the opposite side or around gates to trap people um, and so if that happens you have a minute before your cloak wears off uh, if somebody manages to fly within 2500 meters of you your cloak will drop anyway but you've got that 60 seconds of safety while you sort of figure out what your best strategy is it may be running back to the gate you just came through as fast as possible and trying to get in there before they kill you. Uh, it may be, if you have a cloak on your ship, in addition to this jump cloak, uh, picking a direction, moving away, and then immediately cloaking and hoping nobody sees you or that you can get away clean. It's, uh, it's a dicey thing, but it's something to be aware of when you're traveling, that every time you pop out of a gate, you've got 60 seconds where nobody can see you um, to sort of figure out what you're going doing, find your next target on on uh, your overview or realize that it's already here waiting for you and hit the button. Drive active. So I guess I'll just sort of keep talking until we get to this first station and then maybe I'll cut it on the way back to save some time. But um, you'll note that when I hit warp or jump or whatever the, the button is that takes me to warp, my ship has to turn and align to where I'm going to warp to before it can actually warp. So the two criteria for warp, or entering warp, are one is that you are actually aligned to it, and two is that you've reached 75% of your max speed. And when you go to enter warp, you see these little lines down here. There's like a 50%, 25%, and 75% line. So you'll see the little warping now blue bar increasing. And once it reaches that three quarters, uh, <clears throat> Once it reaches that three-quarter point, you'll see here, so my ship aligns, and it's increasing speed the whole time, and right when it gets here, whoop, then it jumps into warp. So, what that means to you is that different ships have different align times. When you look at the fitting, that's what this little stat is. How long it takes you to enter warp from a full stop, and that's the amount of time it takes you to turn the ship and look, and get to the facing the right direction and to reach that three quarters uh, full speed speed. So this next system should have our station in it and you'll see that instead of a jump uh, option here it will be a dock option because it will automatically select the station that is our destination. There it is, see how it's yellow already and it's already selected and we just hit that button, Drive active. we align and we go. Now. When you're in a larger ship, uh, especially transport ships, it takes you a very long time to align. Uh, sometimes upwards of like 15 to 30 seconds to get your ship fully turned, aligned, get your speed up, and then enter warp. So one tactic that pirates use to prevent you from entering warp if they don't have a warp scrambler is they bump into you with a larger ship, which prevents your ship from accepted. actually reaching alignment. And so, as long as they can keep doing that and preventing you from lining up with where you're going, your ship will never be able to enter warp. And so they'll do that to keep you someplace while their friends show up and, uh, and kill you. So, so we're here. We're at the destination station, which is a nice rhyme and convenient. Um, I believe we can either complete the mission remotely by hitting this here, or we would have to drop this into the item hangar and then go back and complete it. I think we can hit complete here. Yep. And so now, instead of having to go and find our location again, we can just go straight back, undock, and head on back. Looks like there are a few agents here available to us. So, 
So we've learned a little bit about uh, warping and alignment. So we're up here. See, this thing is in yellow because we're undocking. It hasn't selected it for us already. Okay. So we've got to align. Reduces our speed to turn that quickly. Once we're aligned, you can see the gate there. We're aligned to it and our speed is up and we go. And now it's, uh, we can learn a little bit about mission six. We can't, for the most part, there are exceptions to this, but for the most part, you cannot accept missions remotely unless it's a very specific uh, situation with a very specific agent. Um, some mission series, I believe the epic arcs, are like this. You can accept and uh, uh, manage your missions remotely, but almost like the vast majority of, of agents, like this agent here, um, giving you missions won't allow you to accept it uh, remotely, and so you have to go back to the station where they're at and, and get that from them. So it looks like they're going to have us making something in the next mission, but we won't worry about that now. Um, yeah, so what else can I teach you a little bit or show you? Um, there's the tactical camera, which changes your view and throws this grid up on your overall display. And these numbers and these rings show you effectively how far various targets are. So we'll use that when we get into uh, combat missions because it's, it's a pretty useful tool. Um, so you see how this gate is actually above the the radar display or the the range meter and you can see somebody coming in and so it shows yeah it shows you that they're above you because you can turn around and you can see them there but it also drop has a little drop down to show you just how far away they are so that person's 20 kilometers away or was this gate is 15 kilometers away and uh, yeah it just provides you some okay. useful information Active. it gives you a way to sort of look at these are gate guns uh, one above, one below, and around the sides. So that's that's good. And then coming back, it just zooms back into your ship. Um, other useful things down here in the buttons, you've got uh, scanners. These are going to be useful later, but I'll, we'll we'll get into this just briefly while we're while we're flying here to make good use of our time. There's the directional scanner, which shows us. Ooh, that's big. This shows us, it scans for everything that's not cloaked, effectively, within this 14.3 astronomical unit radius of us, right? So you can see it here, and this is what the, the solar system looks like. That's you, there we are, that's you, and it just scans around here. So there's a bunch of wrecks, there's uh, a stargate, and... A number of other things. So that's that's how you can find the dimensional scan or the directional scanners there. Moon analysis. I haven't done any planetary stuff, so I don't I don't really know how to do that. I won't try to make as though I do. Um, and so the two that you'll use most is primarily directional scanner and the probe scanner. And that's probe scanning is uh, is a very different uh, beast, and we'll get into that in the uh, the career agent, the exploration career agents. And then we'll get to use that a bunch. But for now, that's where those are. Autopilot, the button's down here. Again, if you recall previously, uh, it's, it's hotkey is not the best because it's shift okay. control S, which usually means that it's you're saving something or it's safe. And it's not safe to use autopilot. So don't do it. Don't do it. <clears throat> uh, yeah, other than that, we're almost back. And we'll just hand this in, and uh, or actually we've already handed it in, so we just need to go back and prepare for the next one. So I'll wrap this up on my own, but thanks for watching. Uh, I've got a number of quick tips, and I'm kind of adding them as I come through or come across them. Um, if you're on YouTube, and you probably are because this is being posted to YouTube, check out all the other videos in the playlist. Um, if there's something in particular that you want me to cover, or you have a question, or you want me to play a different game, or you want uh, you want anything, or if you just want to chat, shoot me a message, uh, subscribe if you like what I'm doing, add a comment, and, uh, and yeah, so that's all I got. And I'll catch you on the next video for 6 of 10. Thanks a lot.